Hey YouTube, how's it going? SoCal here. And we're going to do a video today on how to mod your Yesu 350AR UHF VHF ham radio. Basically what I'm going to do is just show you here at 420, uh, obviously you're not allowed to broadcast at that on uh, 70 centimeter. Actually, yes you can. Um, but below that, you cannot. I'm not allowed to and just show you the radio and I'm going to hit the key and it's going to say frequency error, you can't do that. Um, and then anything above, uh, let's see, let's kick it out around uh, 450 is the max, so we'll go 455. And it's saying, hey, no, no, you can't do that, no, no, no. So what we're going to do is uh, we're going to do a uh, frequency mod that uh, actually I found on the internet uh, by an individual who refers to himself as Rob. That's all we know. And uh, basically what it's going to do is open up frequencies uh, between 136 to 174 megahertz and uh, 420 to 470 megahertz. And that 470 is the big step because uh, we're only allowed to uh, go up to 450 on that uh, UHF uh, band. So I uh, just want to show you how to do that. So uh, strap on your little soldering iron, which I have right here. It's heated up, ready to fly. Uh, got a little bit of solder just to uh, prime my soldering iron. I'm going to use some of this uh, flux, the solder wick business. Let me turn the uh, video game back up here so you guys can see. So it looks a little blown out right now, but when I focus on uh, what we're doing, it'll be okay. Uh, let's see, where am I? And you're going to need a solder, uh, Allen wrench for the radio. Uh, there's four screws that we're going to uh, undo here. Uh, I'm just going to use this kind of style Allen wrench. And uh, really all you're going to need is a nice soldering iron with a really tiny tip. Hopefully this will get this to uh, nice fine tip. It's a screwdriver, flat blade screwdriver type tip that's uh, probably got a one and a half millimeter head on it. Uh, the parts we're working with are super stupid small. And uh, I also have a real small exacto knife just for prying in case I need and a nice tight pair of dykes everybody needs a tight pair of dykes you know what I'm saying let's get busy alright guys so the first thing you're gonna need is uh, hard liquor if you're a drinker because uh, any project that involves intricate hard to see parts is really probably better off started with uh, at least one glass of booze I'm just kidding about that. Uh, that's just iced tea. Okay, so what we're doing, we're unscrewing these uh, four screws here at the corner. Now, keeping in mind, this is illegal to use these channels, uh, some of these channels anyway, uh, but uh, FCC regulations do state that you are allowed to use them in the case of an emergency where you are no longer capable of communicating otherwise, so we're just going to go with that. Alright, so we have these four undone. We're going to lift this off. There's a speaker wire connection right here. Let me zoom in here for you. And I apologize, I'm not using both my cameras here, but I'm just kind of going lazy on you. Alright, so you can see this connection here. We're just going to pull that and that frees the top. Now, what we got to do is locate uh, next to the uh, digital signal processing chip a group of jumpers uh, and I'll show you with this uh, pen here where they are located. Now we're in this vicinity here. What we're looking for is right here and uh, I wish, I don't know if this goes in any tighter no, it's not going to focus any tighter than that and I apologize, I'll try to uh, get this magnified during post-production of this video 
but what we're looking at here is this group of jumpers here and the one we're interested in is this very last one right where that piece of pencil lead is um, and actually the easiest way to go about doing this is probably just take a exacto knife like I have here and just stick it in there and just pop it right off but uh, that's really not my style I don't like being that kind of evil if you will to my circuitry here and uh, so let me show you what I'm going to do. I am going to take a soldering iron. I'll just do this real time. Might as well just get this done, right? Take the soldering iron. And what I'm going to do is try and take a little bit of this solder wick and hit it right here just to pull a little bit of that solder out. And you can see it's stuck already. Uh, all right, that's really all you need to do. Just pull a little bit of that solder off, and then this should just pop. Hopefully, I, it's hard to do. I'm trying to get this where you can see it at the same time. This is just going to pop right off. And yeah, maybe I need to get a little more solder wick going on in there. Here it goes. And actually, it's stuck <laughs> to the bottom of the solder wick. And I know you're not going to be able to see this, but uh, let's see if I can get it to focus. Uh, no, you can't really tell. But I swear to God, this thing is just pinner. But that's all there is to it, guys. Um, the only thing you want to make sure of, uh, if you have a nice magnifying glass, you want to examine the uh, two posts between uh, the, the component that you just removed just to make sure that they're free of any kind of uh, conductivity uh, aka any loose solder or uh, maybe a stray piece of whatever but you just want to make sure of that maybe you just scrape it from side to side with uh, something small and that's it supposedly so let's, uh, not sure what that's all about, but it looks like it's a grounding thing. Let's plug our uh, speaker back in here. Let me back you guys out so you're not so nuts. Plug our speaker in the way we found it. There we go. Let's lay that down like that. And make sure we put everything back the way we found it. And let me get this guy screwed back together. We'll fire it up. See what we get. All right, we're going to fire it up. Oh, and I should say that uh, the device should reset uh, when you fire it back up. You can tell that the uh, display is a different color now. It was green, and now everything's back to uh, the way it was set uh, when we just purchased it. Uh, let's see if any of my, uh, none of my uh, presets are there anymore, as you can see. So the, the unit has completely read its, reset itself. So if uh, you had anything in the preset that you wanted to keep, uh, you should have uh, actually you just saved it before you started this procedure. So uh, let's see what we get. So uh, before, uh, let's see, looking at this, uh, oh, you guys can't see that, but uh, next to me I have the band plan. And uh, just for instance, we'll go out to uh, 44, 
uh, dot one or dot zero actually is the edge of the band plan. And we're going to go to say 42. Uh, supposedly, according to uh, what I've read here, you should be able to transmit all the way down to uh, 136 megahertz. So let's go way down there. And we are going to push the transmit button. And typically, uh, if we were not allowed to uh, do such a uh, transmit due to the software on the radio, it'll give us an error. Let's see what it does now. Oh. There you go. Let me try to make that a little easier to see for you guys. Alright, so we're at 137.075 megahertz. Push the button and look at that. Transmit. Uh, so that does keep us, or give us the ability, sorry, uh, to transmit there. Uh, let's try uh something above the uh 70 centimeter area say around uh 100 and uh, pardon me uh 465 oh So there you have it, the band mod works. And uh, like I said earlier, I don't recommend you guys using these uh, for any reason other than emergency situations, but uh, it's good because you can uh, get the ultra uh, high frequency ranges down into the uh, GMRS FRS areas, and uh, you get a little more room here on the uh, BHF channels as well. So uh, just doing this video for all you YouTubies out there that uh, have the uh, 350 here that uh, just wanted to see how it's done. Take care, YouTube.